Hello everyone. Welcome to the Plus One YouTube channel. My name is Niket Shah. The topic we are discussing today is Earth Pit. In the previous two parts, we have already discussed in details the subtopics such as what is earthing, types of earthing, problems due to weak earthing, traditional earth pit and the problems. In today's video, we will be learning about why is it necessary for earth inspection housing, the forms and structures of earth inspection housing, material of construction. Along with that, we will also be analyzing the constructions and the ones that are best suited for different scenarios. Lastly, we will also be discussing about the lightning protection system. Please watch this video till the end. If you like it, then do share and subscribe. Firstly, let's talk about why is it important to have an earth pit or an earth inspection housing and a slight glimpse into the history of its evolution. Like we already know, the transformer has the power line connected to it, such as the fees, and neutral lines. For that, it is necessary for grounding to happen to pass these lines to the transformer. Similarly, in a building, grounding or earthing needs to take place. If there is any problem in the earthing in the house and if you touch an equipment such as the motor or computer that is metallic, you will experience a current. If the equipment is non-metallic, you won't experience any current. Usually, for earthing in our houses, a rod is dug in the ground and a wire is connected to that. This is a simple method. Another form of good earthing is by digging a hole in the ground and inserting a water pipe and connecting a wire to it and then placing coal or salt around before covering it up. One more form of earthing is by making a foundation of rocks in the ground and placing our rod in the middle with some sort of composite. An even better form of earthing is by making a wall of bricks around a pit in the middle of it. There will be a rod connected to a wire which will be covered up by cement or rocks. Normally, people also insert a plate in the ground and surround it with salt and coal and then cover it up. But this isn't the most right way to do so, because during the rains, the hole dug in the ground will be filled with water or else it can get too mucky and within a period of time, the earthing disappears and it's washed away by the excess water. If a construction is taking place around the earthing, they might completely demolish it and level their ground as per their convenience. These are the problems that one has to face. But you might be wondering, what is the solution for this? Usually, people make a gutter-like chamber around the earthing, like we can see in the picture and the rod is inserted and surrounded with coal, salt, etc. On top of that, we see a cover similar to the ones we see in a gutter. But do you personally think that this is the right way of doing earthing? Let me know what you think in the comments below. People use this method often but it's a completely wrong process. Firstly, this is wrong because it is made for gutter water and we are using it for earthing, which is a technical problem in itself. Secondly, 
the space inside this is very less and it is very tough to check and maintain. Therefore, because of this, the products used for a gutter aren't technically right. Like for example, if you notice railway or things, they would never use such a method as they use the right products and materials. Now, in traditional earthing such as digging a hole in the ground and inserting a rod surrounded with coal, salt, etc. or inserting a rod directly in the ground and connecting a wire. Third, making a chamber then inserting a rod with a wire in the ground or making a brick wall and inserting a rod with a wire inside it. Like we can see in all these photos are all wrong forms of earthing. Earth pit is used only for earthing or earth inspection housing and has not got anything to do with the gutter. Let's see the front view of this. Usually you get two kinds, a round one and a square one. Now you must be thinking what is the difference between the two since the purpose is the same. But no, this also makes a difference. Like for example, if you take a square shape as you see in the picture, you get an approximate 160 mm of workspace from all four sides. In round shape, from any sides, you get an approximate of 200 mm workspace. This space is needed to easily check and maintain by putting our hands directly inside with the space available. Now you will think that round shape is better, but it's not like that. Let's see the diagram carefully to see the cross-sectional area. In the round, you get an area of 200 mm, but in the square shape, the normal sides are around 160 mm, but the cross-section area is around 226 mm. And hence, that is technically considered a better option for earthing. Round shape is usually not used for earthing, but there are still some people who use it depending on the application of the consumer and the type of earthing they require as per the standardized process. Having said that, usually square shape is used, even for railway earthing, etc. Now, let's look at the side view of earth pit or like an inner view. Earth pit is also of two shapes from the inside, like you can see in the image. The above portion is either square shaped or round, but inside the ground, like you can see, is of two types. One is called the A type and the other is called the V type. It is very important to choose the right type carefully. In the A type, the chamber is somewhat like this. From inside the ground, it spreads outwards and that's why it's called A type. In the V type, as you can see, the chamber kind of is formed inwards and hence it is called V type. Now the difference between these is that if we dig a rod in the ground like in the diagram and there are some elements or chemicals around it and for example if it rains normally the chemicals or soil is supposed to hold the rod firmly and let the earthing be solid. So in the event of a type of earthing in the rains the chemical element will slowly steep down and spread itself which means it will go away from the round creating small gaps in the mud slightly away from the earthing rod, taking the chemicals also away from the rod, because of which the connectivity of the rod with the mud to hold the moisture reduces and thereby reduces the stability.
In V-shape, it maintains a garnish around the rod and the chemical compounds stay close to the rod, which means that the chemical compounds will help hold the rod stable, unlike the A-type where the chemical compounds spread away. Over here, they don't spread away and remain with the rod at all times. Due to this, the earthing works better with a V-shape earth pit. The change of season and weather doesn't affect the earthing in this case. We also will be seeing a more detailed and technical view into this in the next video. Now, let's move on to material of construction and how many kinds of materials are used. Like I mentioned before, we can make earth pits with bricks, but it is a completely wrong method because it's labor intensive. Then I also mentioned gutter style chamber, which is also not a good method. Apart from this, there are steel sheets also used to make earthing chambers or concrete earth pit chambers made of cement. Plastic earthing or polyfiber material is also available for earthing. You must be thinking, what is the difference between all these? Because at the end, we have to connect the rod in the mud. That's just not the case. There are various techniques and technical reasons as to why certain materials are used. So in our next lecture, we will study the A and V type of earth inspection housing in further detail, materials of construction for earthing like bricks, concrete, steel sheets, and the pros and cons of each. Along with that, we will also study how is the light protection system connected to all of this and a detailed study on what is lightning protection system. That's it for this video. If you have any inquiry about our online courses, you just have to download the plus point application and you will find all the details regarding our online courses. If you want to learn these courses from the laptop or computer, then please visit our website www.pluspointonline.com. For more information, you can message me on the WhatsApp number given and I will help you out with all the information regarding the online courses. If you are new to this channel, then please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for listening.